So your job is to find the bad guys. Correct. Figure out where they're doing things wrong, find the different hustles, all the rest of it. What is the biggest hustle in insurance in New Zealand in 2020? Well, based off 2019 stats, I would say, um, you know, we, we, we found a lot of fraud. Like I, I've, I've told everyone before off their phones straight away. Um, we're so glued to our mobile phones that it becomes the easiest way to get a claim paid if you're telling the truth or the easiest way to catch you out for falsif- falsifying claims if you're talking porkies. So, how so? How so? Um, so well, that's not a hustle. That's how they get. So what's the biggest hustle in insurance? Oh, hustle. Sorry. What's like, the biggest hustle? What are people doing? How yeah, are they what, moving? Yeah. What's um, the What's the biggest hustle in insurance right now? That people are trying to scam insurance companies or it's auto to, theft. Car, um, cars. So cars. Cars are you know it's easy property. Cars and drugs go hand in hand. So um, cars are easy to get stolen. Cars are easy to burn out. Cars are you know easy to damage. So anything around that motor space is just the volume is just unbelievable in this. In country. comparison to all the other stuff. Yep, and, and that's probably a worldwide statistic. I mean, in, if you look at South Africa, it would be motor vehicles, but it, their, their data would be like proper violent thefts. You Got know, it. That sort of real bad stuff that we don't have in New Zealand, obviously. We don't have that, which is what makes New Zealand such a great place. But, um, you know, when you were talking gangs, we're talking organized crime, um, you know, stealing vehicles, chopping them up, shipping them to the islands, you know, anything around that motor space is just on the cards. So in the movies... You know, there will be the classic, you know, the steel cars, take it to a chop shop, mm. cut it all up, do whatever. Is that still a thing now? Yep. Chop shops? Yep. Yep, definitely. Chop shop syndicates still exist. Uh, newer model vehicles are very difficult to do it. But you're because, of the, like, because of the tech? Tech and tracking devices. And, um, you know, if you look at, let's say, a brand new BMW, when it comes out before it even hits a dealership, it's yep. got a limiter on it. So it can only go 5Ks an hour until it actually gets to a dealership and they put in a unique code and it opens up. So in the programming of the of it to make sure it doesn't get Yeah, so it's got a limiter. So it can only do 10 15 Ks. Don't know exactly what it is, but it's bugger all until it actually gets to a dealership and then they contact let's say Audi, BMW, yeah. European car and they send them a unique code and they hit enter. And- so chop shop wise, yep. They if you know the syndicates still exist, who is running the syndicates? Gangs. But if you already know, if the police would already know what they, wouldn't this be a layup if it's still a thing? If one of the biggest majority is, is say, car thefts or anything to do with cars, yep. it's still, that's still going through a thing. So what would happen? They would steal a car, take it to the chop shop, de register, de track, de something. Yeah, take the parts from it. So you're looking at, uh, you know, mags, looking at engines, you're looking at yep. the, uh, you know, the GPS units, all the electronics inside of it. Uh, strip that all down and put them in containers, you know, wherever they need to go. Uh, Matt Withers just says, how good is the mo? Good, yeah. I need to get some um, branding done anyway. I've got some new corporate stuff I need, bro, so I'll hit you up. <laughs> how good is the mo? <laughs> so how do how do police, you know, the classic of I was, um, you know, most countries gang, the, the access of technology to gangs is usually better than the government's. For, for a lot of lot of places. For a lot of places. I wouldn't say that's probably necessarily true in New Zealand. In New Zealand, yeah. You know, yeah. But you're right, yeah, in other places. So how how is it different with how the how the good guys try and catch the bad guys for New Zealand compared to... Somewhere? Well, so New, Ge- New Zealand police, well, the, let's say the Commonwealth, because like I come from Australia and I spent most of my serve, well, all of my service in the police in Australia, so I can only really speak. But we, yeah. we did a little bit of cross-ops with uh, the New Zealand police and they're very similar in what they do. So... Yeah. Um, in terms of access and resource and 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 strategies and process to try yeah, and track. Yeah, it's all yep. quite similar. So, yep. I mean, for a standard sort of syndicate like that, which is, you know, property and drugs go hand in hand yep. when it comes to um, police investigations. So, um, you know, we're talking telco data is a huge one. So that's tapping phones. Um, informants, which is what I'm, I'm massive on, even in the insurance world. I've got a heavy network of uh, confidential sources. So, so inform- informants is still Fuck a thing. Yeah, bro. Yeah, 100%. I use them in insurance today. You know all those gnarly informants. jobs? The yeah. gnarly jobs I tell you about the Northland. Yeah. I've got my people up there, bro. Okay, so let's go down informants. Yep. So I so I didn't, I didn't. wouldn't have thought that gangs would still be in the chop shop, so I was wrong. I... It's so probably not as prolific as prolific what it once was. Once was. Yeah. So how do you build a network of informants? Like if I if I 
trust. And, but the informants will be on both sides, right? Because I'm sure there's there's people that are double dipping, one playing the bad guys and one playing the good. What percentage of 100 informants double double dip? 10? It varies. I, I couldn't give you a specific number, but there would, you're right, there would be a majority that tell – like when I used to be a detective and I used to have my own, so you would cultivate your own sources and they would become yours and you managed them to a certain degree. When we started getting real gnarly shit, you would have proper controllers that are trained in it. But how do you do, how do, you do that? Like how do you build a network of informants? Trust. So you – How? You, like say like if I rolled someone on a job and then I was like, well, you know, I can maybe sort of, you know, make the facts of charge look pretty gnarly for the courts if you give me something. Got it. Give me your phone. Let me have a look in your phone. Who's ba 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 ba? Ah, and then find out who they're. You know, they're, but it's all stays real closed. Like, oh, and like the the procedures and the legislation and stuff around uh, human sources and co- the confidentiality yeah. is just airtight in the police. So, like, if you were to, um, if one of your sources was to get found out, they were a source, and it was through anything other than themselves. You'd be stuffed, you know, because they know. Yeah, because you've got a, it's protection of methodologies, man. Yeah, so it's and, and is that the is that the case for still globally? Is it the same thing? Uh, I would I would just assume so because like they're putting themselves, you're yeah. putting them at risk to get information or intelligence off them. So you know, there's a lot of risk around that for them. As and is anything do- documented with informants? Yeah, yeah. But every, every like, I'm not saying you know, like if I have a business and I have my customers. They are in some type of online CRM and they're tagged as wholesalers, retailers, things. Like, at certain yeah, things. It's all is, documented. Yeah. Yeah. But so, let's hope that never gets hacked. But yeah. they've all got code names and shit. So, like, oh, if you okay. were my informant, Robert, you would be like, code name, I don't know. Oakland Raiders. Oakland Whiskey or something. <laughs> <laughs> something like So, you so, don't know who, you don't get the actual name. So, if they were to be hacked, only you would know it's them. They yes. would be known as Oakland Whiskey to everyone else in the world. Got it. <laughs>